Lesson 73, Slicing Cones. We spent quite a few lessons studying first degree equations with two variables, like this equation y equals 3x plus 4. But for the next several lessons, we're going to make things a little tougher and get into second degree equations with two variables. So for these equations, either x or y, or maybe both of them, are raised to the second power. And let me just show you a simple example of what I'm talking about. See, this equation has two variables, y and x, but this x is raised to the second power. And so this is a second degree equation, but it still has two variables. The other second degree equations that we've been solving for a long time, those just have one variable. They just have one unknown, just an x. And so this is a little bit different. Now, you know how linear equations work. Equations like y equals 3x plus 4. With these, there's a steady relationship between x and y. When x goes up by 1, y always goes up by a certain amount or maybe down by a certain amount. But y always changes by the same amount each time. We say that the rate of change, the slope, is constant in a situation like that. It stays the same. And actually, for y equals 3x plus 4, the rate of change is positive 3. So when x goes up by 1, y always goes up by 3. That's the way linear equations work. Well, the main reason that second degree equations with two variables are more complicated is that their rate of change doesn't stay the same. And let me just show you what happens. We'll use the equation y equals x squared. Let's find y in this equation when x equals 1. Go ahead and do that. Put it in. Yeah. So x equals 1, y equals 1 is a solution pair for this equation. Now let's increase x by 1. Let's change it to x equals 2. And then we put the 2 in. Now go ahead and calculate the matching y value. Right. So when x equals 2, y equals 4. And this is another solution pair, but do you see what happened? We increased x by 1 and y increased by 3. And so from that, you might think that this equation has a rate of change of positive 3. But watch this. Watch what happens when we start out at x equals 4 and then increase x by 1. Let's figure out the matching y value. What's 4 squared? Yes. So when x equals 4, y equals 16. And now let's increase x by 1. Let's change it to 5. And then go ahead and calculate the matching y value. Good. So when x equals 5, y equals 25. Do you see what happened this time? We increased x by 1, but this time y went up not by 3, it went up by 9 y went from 16 all the way up to 25. And see, the rate of change for this equation, y equals x squared, the rate of change does not stay the same. And if we chose another value for x, like maybe 18 or something, and then increased x by 1, you'd see that y would change by some other amount. And so that's what's different about second degree equations with two variables. They're not like linear equations. With linear equations, the rate of change always stays the same. But that's not true for second degree equations. Now here's the interesting thing. What do you think this does to the graph? You know when the rate of change is constant, like with a linear equation, the graph is always a straight line. Well, what do you think the graph of y equals x squared is going to be? Let me just show you. See, instead of a straight line, the graph is curved. And it makes sense if you think about it, because remember, the rate of change is the same thing as the slope of the graph. And so if the rate of change is moving around a lot, if it's changing, that's going to cause the graph to curve. The slope is going to curve. So let me just make sure you're with me on this. A first degree equation with two variables, a linear equation, always has a graph that's a straight line. But a second degree equation with two variables has a graph that's curved. Now, the other thing you need to know about second degree equations is that different kinds of those are going to have different curves when you graph them. 
And there are actually four major types of curves that a second degree equation with two variables can have. There's the parabola, which you've seen before probably from Algebra 1. This is the graph of a second degree equation, a certain kind of second degree equation with two variables. But so is a circle. A second degree equation can also have a circle graph. And then this oval shape is called an ellipse. This is another one of the major second degree curves. And then the last one is kind of weird. It looks like two curves, but these two sides actually go together. And this is called a hyperbola. Now let me ask you some questions just to see if you know these. Here's a second degree equation curve. Is this a parabola, a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola? That's right. An ellipse is basically an oval shape. How about this one? Is this a parabola, circle, ellipse, or hyperbola? Yeah. A parabola is kind of the U shape, but the sides go out a little bit. And what about this curve? What kind of curve is it? You got it. The hyperbola is the one with two sides. They're actually called branches. There's a story about how all of these curves were first discovered that's kind of interesting. An ancient Greek mathematician, he was a genius, he was playing around with different shapes in his mind. And believe it or not, he was working with two cones, kind of like ice cream cones. And he had one cone upside down on top of the other like this. So they were tip to tip. And he had this picture in his imagination. And then he imagined taking a flat plane, like a piece of glass from a window or something, and using it to slice through the cones. And see, if you slice like this, the cut that the piece of glass makes is going to have the shape of a circle. It'll be a perfect circle. But then if you angle the glass, if you tilt it, then the cut will have the shape of an ellipse. See, now the cut has an oval shape. Turns out that's a perfect ellipse, that cut will be. But then if you tilt the glass even further, so that the top part of the glass goes up through the top of the cone like this, then the cut that the glass makes turns out to be a parabola. Remember, parabola is the U-shape. And then the last way of doing it is to have the glass tilt even more so that it cuts through both of the cones. And when you do it like this, the cut that the glass makes is a hyperbola. See, here's one of the branches, and here's the other. And so by tilting the piece of glass in different ways, you can come up with all of the major types of curves for second-degree equations. And here's the amazing thing. This Greek mathematician did all of this hundreds of years before algebra was even invented. But he realized that these curves had something in common, something mathematical, because they could all be created by slicing through two cones. He realized that they were mathematically related. And then years and years later, mathematicians figured out that the curves, these, these curves, were all graphs of second-degree equations with two variables. But because of the way the curves were first discovered by slicing up cones, these curves are today called conic sections. And the word conic just means cone, and then section comes from the term cross-section. That's just what you get when you cut something across. That's called a cross-section. But that's where the name conic section comes from. And what we're going to do for the next several lessons is learn all about these curves, the conic sections, and about their equations, how to graph them and everything.